I have a mystery item for you, yes. What do you think this is? I would imagine some people would think it's some kind of game or maze or like a game of Go or something. It does look like it, doesn't it? Would it help if I told you that the little hexagons, some of them are made out of plastic and some of them are made out of lead? People who know who you are are going to assume this has something to do with astronomy. It does. And in fact, the lead's a bit of a giveaway because one of the things that people, everyone knows about lead is that x-rays don't get through lead. And in fact, this is part of an x-ray telescope. It's sort of the equivalent of the lens in an x-ray telescope. So it's the bit that goes at the top. So it's the bit that the, the x-rays first pass through before they get to the detector. Yeah, an x-ray telescope tends to be, it doesn't have to be a closed tube, but basically you've got this thing kind of up there somewhere, and then you've just got a detector down here that just detects the x-rays. That goes over the hole at the front? Yes. Yeah, it is, I mean, it's kind of the equivalent of a lens, but it, this comes back to how you actually make pictures with x-rays. This is a thing called a coded mask. Um, and it's used on hard X-ray and gamma ray telescopes. It's actually used in medical imaging and other areas as well, but in the astronomical community, uh, we put them on uh, telescopes. They tend to be the kind of telescopes that work at wavelengths that don't get through the atmosphere, so they tend to be on satellites. So, for example, the Integral satellite, which is a gamma ray observatory, an ESA mission up there at the moment, has coded mask on the front of it. And so either you put them in space or the alternative these gamma rays get at least a little bit way into, down into the atmosphere. So if you have a balloon, you can, you can actually have a balloon-borne experiment with one of these telescopes on as well. So I borrowed this from a friend of mine, a um, guy called Tony Bird, works at the University of Southampton. So this is actually a University of Southampton coded mask, uh, and he's an old mate, so he lent it to me for a week or so. It does have a symmetry. It actually has this sort of strange rotational symmetry that actually if you, if you rotate the thing around, you get back to the same pattern you started with. And this isn't, it really isn't the random pattern. Um, the, the pattern of, of effectively holes, the bits that the x-rays can get through and the, the blocked out bits is, is uh, carefully chosen. This is a thing called a hexagonal uniformly redundant array or a HURA is its technical name for it. But it's actually designed with a, with a specific objective in mind. And I put it down because it weighs a ton. <laughs> we need to back up a little bit and talk about um, how, how you make pictures, basically how telescopes work, how cameras work. At normal optical wavelengths and actually across a lot of the electromagnetic spectrum, the way a camera works is the way your video camera works, that you've got a lens at the front which focuses the light down onto a detector at the back, typically a CCD these days, which records the light that's come from a... So essentially you're taking all the light from came from a particular direction and you're focusing it down to a particular point on the detector. And that works fine at optical wavelengths because it relies on the fact that you've got things like lenses or mirrors that allow you to bend the path of light so you can focus light down in this way. X-rays, at least at the soft X-ray end of things, you can still actually focus light. You have to start getting a little cleverer because if you just put a mirror in the way of an X-ray, it just goes straight through. If you put a mirror at a very oblique angle, the light will still uh, get reflected off it so you can still focus light even at x-rays. You can do it with the same material. If you have the same material viewed face on, x-rays just go straight through. If you think about the atoms within it as little balls, then if you think about it when it's face on, there are gaps between the balls. But if you take the same thing and view it very close to edge on, now there are no longer any gaps. And so actually the x-rays which penetrated perfectly easily when it was face on, when it's at an oblique incidence, will deflect off the surface and so you can still focus. Now it's, it's quite hard to do because if you think about it, if you've got a given area of your mirror, if you then put it at an angle like that, you suddenly only have a very tiny area. So to build an x-ray telescope this way, they actually build these nests of mirrors inside each other, uh, each of which sort of deflects a little bit of light so you can end up forming a, an image that way. But even that breaks down. By the time you, you get to the hard x-ray end and the gamma ray end of things, nothing you can do will focus the light effectively. So you need some new technique for imaging. And this is what this is. This is a thing called a, said it's a thing called a coded mask, and essentially all it does is it throws a shadow. If this were a telescope, supposing there was only one source out there, one bright quasar, massive black hole emitting loads of X-rays, and you wanted to know where it was in the sky, all you'd have to do is point this telescope somewhere in vaguely the right direction, and then the X-rays from that quasar will come through. Uh, the mask here and you know where they hit the lead they'd be stopped where they hit the plastic they just go straight through um, and so you've now got your detector behind which records the x-rays it'll just see a picture essentially of this mask but where the mask appears on the detector will tell you what direction the light was coming from just like if you were looking you know if you're looking at shadows normally you can tell where the sun is in the sky just from the pattern of shadows so this is doing exactly the same thing. From the pattern of shadows that this mask casts on your detector, you can tell where that source was. So couldn't you just make that a big X or a straight line? Why is it, why is it this funky, groovy pattern that it is? So that's because there is more than one source out there. So if there were only one source, you, you, it would be, astronomy would be very dull. 
but actually almost any pattern would work because you could just see the pattern of shadows. What's clever about this is that actually, even if you have multiple sources, it can still produce, tell you where they all are and how bright they all are. So I'm gonna, yes, give you a demonstration of how these things work with a nice little optical model. So actually I've made uh, one of these uh, coded masks here. This is actually the same design as the one on the integral satellite up there in space at the moment. But rather than making it out of blocks of tungsten or lead, I've made it out of a transparency sheet and a photocopy. Here's my high-tech gamma ray X-ray telescope made out of an old cardboard box. And there's the coded mask that goes on the top. And obviously then the detector will be down here at the bottom. And so we can very easily see what happens and shine it through. You can see basically you get ju just the shadows of the, uh, of the mask. And, and when the light's in different places, obviously the pattern moves around. So by recording where the pattern is, you essentially know where the, the light source was. So the clever part is that this is a trivial thing to do because actually if there's only one source out there, it's pretty easy to figure out what the pattern is. The neat part is if there's more than one source, as we find astronomically, and you want to actually uh, look at more than one thing at once, we can still do it. So I need to borrow your phone for this. All right. So if we now, if there is more than one source out there in space, so you can see what happens is you get overlapping shadows. So as you can see, in some places you have white, in some places you have black, and in other places you have shades of grey. Okay. Just depending on you know, exactly how things line up, depending on where the sources are, you end up with these different overlapping patterns. <laughs> okay. Dancing patterns. And it's just a, and it's a pretty simple, simple job to figure out what's doing what, is it? The clever part about these, whether it's these uniformly redundant arrays, whether it's one like this, which is hexagonal, or whether it's one like this, which is designed around squares, the, the clever thing about them is that that pattern of blacks, whites and greys you can use to interpret whatever is going on in the sky. There's never any ambiguity. So in fact, there's a, if you like, there's a unique way you can go from the things you detect, that patterns of shades of grey that you detect on your detector plane, you can go all the way back to saying exactly what the sky must have been. So there's no degeneracy, there's no confusion, there's no possible multiple combinations of things that could produce the same patterns of shades of grey. There's a uni unique way to go from what you actually detect here, very simply, back to what an image of the sky looks like. Does that mean designing these things is a bit of an art form? In, in the mathematical sense of the word, it is indeed an art form. So there's, a, there's a, a rather clever mathematical algorithm that allows you to just define one of these optimal arrays that really has no ambiguity at all between what you detect and what the sky was doing. And the second question is, well, why aren't they all the same? Surely once you've got a pattern that does that job, they must all just have the exact same pattern on them. So, and in fact, quite a lot of them do have the same patterns on them, but there's, for example, different sizes of array you might want in terms of what resolution of images you're trying to make, what size of field of view you're trying to make. In fact, I have a really, let me show you a picture, a very pretty picture. So here's a whole series of these hexagonal uniformly redundant arrays. And you can see a different order. So basically they're, they're making smaller and smaller little blocks, which allows you to make finer and finer detailed pictures. Um, and actually the thing that strikes me about them is they're really rather beautiful. So special is the quality of that mirror. That mirror was engineered to be so perfectly optically smooth that if you took this 2.4 meter diameter mirror, scaled it up to the radius of the Earth, the largest bumps on that surface would only be six inches high.